had it on the sleigh, and I dragged it up here using a come along up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I just wrote a. Yeah, sit down. I just wrote a little summary. I've been okay. you know, jog my memory to go on something like that. What's the best way to kind of set this up? You think there, Jeff? No, well, just go. I'll, oh. I'll uh, move over to here. Well, let me catch. I, I've been working shoveling. I shovel. <laughs> took me three quarters of an hour to shovel that goddamn trail out. Uh. You're not taking a picture of me now, are you? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, just from the woodshed to the crap house there, the toilet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the snow's deep. Oh, they couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Oh, if you want a history on the property, mm -hmm. uh, I acquired it in 1983. Uh, for logging purposes, taking wood off it. And in 1984, we were running, I had a forester from the Natural Resources Timber Branch running that north boundary of this lot. We came over that big boulder over here, about 200 meters northeast of here. And I grabbed a sample because it was all rusty. Threw my pack and we carried on and went around the perimeter of the property, 80 acres. So I brought that a couple of days later, I brought that sample down to uh, Paul Nielsen from Naranda. He sent it off for assay in about probably 10 days he gets it back. Assay back, he said, was just under a gram. Mm -hmm. So with that, then Paul wanted a tour of the property. So him and I started looking at this 80 acres here. Then we expanded off to the east, finding all kinds of sulfides all these like the J and the K and and over actually I took them up to the A zone. We sampled a took one grab sample down over the hill as I mentioned previous, sixteen grams out of it. That opened his eyes up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, You better start staking. So I staked I think about twelve or fourteen claims. And then they added another thirty five to it. They purchased the tower lot over here, uh, where the fire tower was, 160 acres, from uh, Bob Bauer and Rillo. And uh, then in the spring of 1985, they started an EM way down near the bridge there and uh, carried on. And uh, then with that, they done VLF, MAG, IP, and then followed up uh, the last was diamond drilling and I think they drilled about five or six holes in here. Mm -hmm. From then on they examined the property quite thoroughly and then after two years they said we're gonna drop it. So they dropped the property and uh, then I got a phone call from Inco Gold, Al Abbott, and I guess he had flown into the A zone previous even though he didn't even own it, sampled it under Naranda's nose. Mm -hmm. And then they turned around and said, well, this is interesting. We want to make a deal with you. You know what? I could have set any price. The, I could have got probably $100,000 down as a down payment. Mm -hmm. Stupid me. I, I never <laughs> even, he said, what do you want? I said, oh, 40 or 50 grand. Mm -hmm. Wrote the check out right there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they, they operated for two years, done a lot of drilling, done uh, a brand new grid on here, north-south grid with five tie lines on it. They done uh, follow-up uh, IP, uh, EM, VLF, IP, and then uh, a bunch of diamond drilling holes and stuff like that on it. A lot of stripping. They had Steve Hamer in here and he done a lot of stripping for them. Wayno Hill was uh, another contractor that done some bulldozing. He's a neighbor of mine over here at that time. Uh, they held on for a couple of years and uh, all of these companies, they got the philosophy in the, those days. Two years, if we can't come up with an ore body, we're out of here. And that's exactly what they done. They jumped out of there. So that was the spring of 90, 1990. They uh, opt out of it. I, caught a, uh, I got a hold of a company called Glamis Gold out of Vancouver. They took it on. They wanted a heap leaching property. So with that, I uh, 
hired a couple of uh, geologists and we went at it. Well, I think we sampled seven or 800 samples off the property. They sent them away and then they came in, the company, some of the head people looking at it for heat bleaching. It didn't amend the heat bleaching and they dropped it within a year. Mm-hmm. So with that, then uh, the property sat for probably four or five years. Avalon Ventures approached me, uh, Don Bubar, uh, Ian Campbell, I guess, was the head guy down here. Uh, Karen Reese was their geologist too. So they came out and examined the property and they said, well, we want to take an option on the property. So they did and they, they done a lot, of, a lot of work adding uh, value to the property, carrying it on and uh, mm-hmm. then after a couple of years they opt out of it. So then the property sat for, I think till from 1998 to 2002. They, uh, then I got a hold of Valerie Gold out of Vancouver, Val Gold later on, it changed its name to Val Gold. They came in, uh, uh, a couple of the geologists spent on the due, di- due diligence on it probably for probably a week. They liked what they seen and then they made an offer and I accepted, I couldn't refuse the offer they made, it was a good one. So uh, I took that. So then the, the wife and I said, well, we'll see how this carries on because by this time every other company previous to them stuck here for two years and they're gone. So I said to Ian and, and Bob Bubar, Don Bubar, I said, uh, hope you guys hang in here for a little longer and, uh, and whatnot. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry I got that screwed up. Uh, I told uh, Tom Pollock that, and, and it was um, Valerie Gold, not Babylon Ventures, that by this time. So I told them, I said, hope you guys hang in there. We're going to be here for the long term. Well, they stuck with the property right up to when you guys t- took over, mm-hmm. when uh, White Metals took over, and they've done a lot of nice work here. Uh, lots of drilling, lots of stripping, uh, uh, new grids and stuff like that. So then uh, you guys took over, and here we are at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Now, whether that's a good interview or not, I don't know. Perfect. Could, Perfect. could be a pile Perfect. of bullshit, too. <laughs> it's no bullshit. I don't bullshit. You got to, one thing I've learned a long time ago, if you don't lay, if you, you got to lay the facts out, true facts, mm-hmm. no, no uh, false stuff that's exaggerating or anything like that, mm-hmm. because you're going to get caught up in your BS. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. I've seen guys trying that kind of stuff in. That doesn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. It gives you a black eye or several black eyes because you're going to be blackballed then. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. So anyway, now you guys are here, and let's hope you guys here for are here for the long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, what do you think of my shack? Yeah. I bust my ass here yeah. bringing this up. Like saying, yeah. I hauled every friggin' piece up the <laughs> hill there on my back. Sheets of plywood and then the two by six for the floor and studs and bore in paneling and and your yeah. wife was helping you haul it all up here as well. Pardon? Your wife was ha- helping you. Oh, haul she it was helping me well. haul it. Yeah, she done the lighter things and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh, whatnot. So, yeah, we we had uh, well, I lost the wife in 2017, and uh, I tell you, it's a shock now when you're by yourself. We were married for almost 57 years. No, oh, good for you. And uh, I'll tell you, it was a very good relationship I had. So now I really miss her because she used to be here and she'd be doing a lot of things around here. I'd probably have her cleaning the house here now. <laughs> if it was, but I have to do this stuff. Mm-hmm. Same as at home, I got to keep the, but I keep my house ship shape at home. So I try to keep up what she did, used to do at home. So. And we have two kids, uh, one, my daughter, Barbara, is a nurse in Red Lake. Douglas, my son, is a driller at uh, the Hemlo Mine. He's been there about five or six years. Yeah, so, anyway, yeah, so, I got one granddaughter, she's going in, her a vet, she's in Guelph now, she's in her, taking her master's, 
So, yeah. You have a lot of pictures on your wall here. There well, now. yeah, my granddaughter's here. She's up on that tower, I think, or something like that. Or oh, by that, by my truck on the top right hand corner there. She's standing there. Yeah. Kate, that's her name. Smart as a whip. She can go to into a restaurant, look through the menu, and uh, tell you everything's on that menu, what the prices are and everything. I've never seen, not that she's a relative of mine, she's my granddaughter, but she's sharp as a whip. Man, oh man, I wish I had the brains. <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here telling you, <laughs> taking interviews. <laughs> So Mel, you got all these pictures on the wall. You want to show some of the pictures here and who's Why in not? them? And uh, okay, the there's our good buddy John Scott with the ministry right here. He's a good friend that I've known. I worked with John. He, John's been on the property many years. Actually, John saved my life. Where the old trapper shack was there, there was a uh, three long log bridge with planks across it. Two of them broke. John was behind me with a trailer on his, with pulling with his quad. Two of the logs broke as it went across. Next thing John see me diving into the, the brink. The bike hit the bank, I hit the throttle, the bike hit the bank, bounced back, landed on top of me, pinned me right down upside down in the water. I'm up to my elbows in the mud right under. John jumps in. He said I was in out for about three quarters of a minute underwater. So anyway, he brings me out, and next thing I, I don't remember nothing. So anyway, next thing he's hitting me on the chest and stuff, and water's coming out. Next thing I, oh my head is spinning like this. See, so I looked in the water, and there's my hat, hat and I ran in the water, jumped in up to here, <laughs> got my hat out. <laughs> But later on, him and I uh, upro we uprooted the, uh, got the bike out with his winch and stuff. A couple of pulls of the cords, there was a Suzuki. And poo, away we, away she went. We came up here. We had, I had extra clothes for him and I, because he was right into the brink too. So we dried up, lit the fire good, had lunch. We're out in the bush in the afternoon prospecting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah well that's uh, Barb Quartz and, uh, and that, this lady is the uh, mayor of Thunder Bay, Lucy Clooster House. Yeah. Uh, Keith Hobbs. Uh, Wilson, I can't think of the first name. What the heck was his first name? He's I the Chamber of Commerce. Pardon? Doug, uh, Doug, Doug Wilson? No, no. no. But anyway, Bob Court, Lucy, Chataway, and uh, the um, Chamber of Commerce assistant behind there. Yeah. So, and then of course I got a couple of pictures of, there's the uh, Premier there with, uh, with the MPP, uh, Kevin Holland for our area, Thunder Bay Addy Koki here. Yeah. Uh, this is some of the uh, Val crew here. And uh, that's myself. The wife, uh, Cindy Chu, Bob Chadoe, and Don Bruby. Yeah. Oh, this is Steve Wilkinson, the CEO of the company, Val Gold. We were up here and uh, had a little bubbly and stuff like that. So that's some of the drilling and stuff from different companies when we fix the road up and different things like that. Yeah. Some of the different drilling. That's my granddaughter. Yeah, these, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Barb got the Chamber of Commerce up here, Barb Court did, to uh, promote mining in Thunder Bay. And I think she done a darn marvelous job. We spent most of the day down below there and uh, and the wife provided uh, bubbly and light lunch and stuff for these guys mm -hmm. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. This is some of the old history. Those, uh, that backhoe up in there, that's the Naranda when they first came in here. 
there's Naranda's camp on the tower property. That's uh, about 1985, fall and uh, winter of 85. And some of their trenching over there first, then they drilled. That's Steve Hamer's backhoe, the uh, spider. Uh, that's a uh, McGinnis guy, he's a Scottish lad I work with. Uh, there's Wim van der Cliff. That's myself. That's one of the drilling companies. That's my wife. Uh, Ellen, that's uh, me standing uh, southeast of the fire tower in that swale there before you got on Wolf Road. Oh yeah. And there's uh, Ron Tweedy. I don't know if you knew Ron Tweedy, but uh, the geologist he worked with, Mike Leahy and I, and uh, when we were working for uh, Glamis. That's myself fixing the bridge across here. We used to store core across the uh, at that old shack there. Mm -hmm. Until it got, we got too much corn, we had no room, and uh, they said, what are we going to do? I said, you know what? I said, I used to be in logging and stuff, and I said, you want a landing, or you, what do you want? We want an area clear, cleared. I said, can I get $50,000? By all means. So they hired a D8, and we cleared all this here, and that was a bit where the camp so is. There. Those are your pictures there from that? Yep. That's the pictures of the D8 there. Where the camp was, there was uh, 18 feet of earth underneath that camp mm -hmm. where the peak is. And we cleared it. There's a big ravine there where that <coughs> truck is down there. That's all filled in with trees on the bottom. And then we filled it in with about 15 feet of soil from this hill down here that start, start where it started to slope here and uh, there's no trees on it. Yeah. We pushed everything down there and now we got a at least a decent spot to put core. Yeah. So we needed that. Well, we still have lots of room down there. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, that's some of the uh, VG that uh, Val picked up in their drilling. That's on the on the uh, UV zone over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Bob Chataway, you know Bob. Oh yeah. Tom Pollock, Pollock Drive, the sign there. We always had some little bit of name for some <laughs> these favorite geologists we that worked here and stuff. Eh? Yeah, the, oh, there's Bernie and uh, Bernie Sneeders, uh, Gary Wiesa, and Tom Pollock, I believe, right there. Hmm. Yeah, Bernie's, I think Bernie's here looking at, yeah, there he is right there looking at a rock. That's why I got the, uh, the uh, poppy there because yeah. of his passing, eh? Very cool. Yeah. So that was the wife and I, I's idea to have a little history here and and people come up and take a look. Oh, we need, when did they do this? Uh, let's see, what year was that? <laughs> Harold Wilson. Pardon? 